What I'd like to show you today is a new Keeper Ultra Plus. Uh, the Keeper Ultra Plus is an iterative product. It's based upon the same basic form factor as the original Keeper Ultra. Uh, and with that device, of course, there's 4K, uh, Ultra HD, 2K, and HD. Uh, but it's a single channel device in the sense you can record a single file, single uh, source input. So with Keeper Ultra Plus, what we've done is we've basically extended this uh, in, a, in, a, in a new uh, new hardware internally to do multi-channel HD. So that means you can do up to four channels. So in terms of working with multiple channels of the Keeper Ultra Plus, you're going to keep the same uh, frame rate and raster size. It could be 720, but they'd all have to be 720 uh, or 1920 like this. The way it functions is you would plug in your first source into the first SDI port and then you add from there. So it's from one up to four, you could just do two or three. This enables uh, a few different workflows, of course you could have a four camera multi-shoot um, and you do all of them at the same time. And finally, yes you might do the multi-camera but you could also use this as a, a way to work with a single camera input uh, where you might be running uh, multiple feeds from that camera and you can encode at different uh, profiles. So in other words you could have a ProRes file that's 444 but the next one might be proxy because you want to work with the very light uh, uh, weights on your, your timeline when you're doing quick editing. The other great thing about the product is it now has HDMI 2.0 with the Keeper Ultra Plus. It'll be supporting ProRes XQ as well which is the highest form of ProRes in terms of picture quality. Right now we're looking at the back of the device. You'll see that you have the four SDIs. These are 3G SDI for both in and output. You also have the option to put in SFPs, uh, which will allow you to run fiber. The interface is nice and simple. If I come on here and I go to config, you'll see that you've got the ability to encode multi-channel or perhaps single channel. So when you're doing 4K, of course, you would be in single channel mode, and then you're getting a single channel. But with multi-channel, you can then tell it how many inputs you have so that it correctly records all the files. On the pack drive, which is our SSD media that works for the Keeper Ultra Pass, it'll name the files with a dot uh, one or two or three or four so you know what source it came off of. So working with it when you get into edit is really simple. Uh, simply gang them all up and you can of course move between the cameras for a very quick live switch in your edit, so to speak. So when it comes to, uh, to the play app, you can see that I could choose just channel one. And then on screen here, we're seeing just that channel. I can swap over to the second channel. You can see that full screen, or indeed look at all channels. A uh, great thing with the product as well is that along the SDI inputs, you've got support for 16 channels of audio per SDI. So that means a single device can be giving you four video streams, a total of 64 audio tracks. Uh, it's a half rack size, so you put two of them together in a single rack frame, you're going to be getting 128 uh, channels of audio with eight channels of video. You, you're looking at a price of the, for the device of $39.95, so that's less than 1000 per channel. The product will be available in June. Uh, which is not very far away, <laughs> it gives us another month. Um, and in terms of future capabilities, for those familiar with our products, they're aware that we do a lot of firmware updates. So when it comes to HDR, which is a big theme for us at the show, over time it will gain HDR support. You can actually play HDR material and encode it right now to the ProRes file. For playback of that file at the moment, you would be connecting one of our mini converters, it's known as a Hi-Fi 4K Plus for instance, and that will trigger the display when you've got HDR material to display it correctly. Uh, but that will actually go into the firmware over time here, so you can go straight off the HDMI 2 port out of the back of the device.